Lecture 10-2, Nyquist Plots and Nyquist Criterion. The objective is to apply the Nyquist Criterion to determine if a system is stable and use the Nyquist Diagram to determine the relative stability of a control system by finding the phase margin and the gain margin. Theory. It is awkward to deal with 1 plus g of s and look for encirclements at the origin, so instead we will look at g of s and examine encirclements of negative 1, 0 instead. If the system does not have unity feedback, then use g of s, h of s instead of g of s for the Nyquist plot. So if we have a non-unity feedback control system, the transfer function t of s is equal to y of s over r of s or g of s over 1 plus g of s, h of s. The Nyquist criterion states, if a Nyquist contour in the S-plane encircles Z zeros and P poles of G of S, H of S, and does not pass through any poles or zeros of G of S, H of S, and is in the clockwise direction along the contour, the corresponding contour in the G of S, H of S plane encircles the origin of the G of S, H of S plane, where N is equal to Z minus P times in the clockwise direction. Thus, in order for a closed loop system to be stable, z must be zero, which represents the number of roots of the characteristic equation or the poles of the closed loop transfer function. By making the Nyquist path enclose the entire right half plane and the imaginary axis and testing g of s, h of s, it is possible to determine the stability by counting in the number of clockwise encirclements of the negative one point on the Nyquist diagram. If n is negative, it represents the number of counterclockwise encirclements of the negative one point on the Nyquist diagram. If n intersects the negative one point on the Nyquist diagram, then the closed loop system has poles on the j omega axis. The closed loop system will be stable if and only if the net number of clockwise encirclements of the point negative one plus j zero by the Nyquist diagram of g of s h of s plus the number of poles of g of s, h of s in the right half plane is zero, or z is equal to n plus p, where n is the number of clockwise encirclements of negative one plus j zero, and p is the number of poles of g of s, h of s in the right half plane. We want z to equal zero, which means there are no zeros of one plus g of s, h of s in the right half plane, which means we have a stable system. For our first example, we're going to have a clockwise gamma contour with two poles and a zero inside, which means the number of zeros is one, the number of poles is two, and nz minus np equals negative one. So in the gamma prime s-plane, we're going to have a, a counterclockwise encirclement of negative one, which is gamma prime. In our next example, we're going to have a clockwise encirclement of one pole and one zero for gamma. So nz is one, np is one, so nz minus np is equal to zero. That means there's no encirclement of negative one as shown here. In our next example, we are going to have a clockwise encirclement of just a zero, so nz is equal to one, np is equal to zero, nz minus np equals one, so we're gonna have a clockwise encirclement of negative one for gamma prime. In our next example, we are going to have a clockwise encirclement of two poles. So nz is zero, np is two, nz minus np is negative two, so that means we're gonna have a counterclockwise encirclement of negative one, and it's actually going to be two encirclements as shown here. For stability analysis, we want to determine the number of zeros of one plus g of s in the right half plane. Hence, we will choose the Nyquist contour gamma as the entire j omega axis and an infinite semicircle in the right half plane. If there are poles or zeros on the j omega axis, we will have to be careful around those areas. If the open loop transfer function g of s, h of s has a pole at the origin or on the imaginary axis, then based upon Cauchy's theorem, the analysis must use the following modified Nyquist paths. We won't do too much drawing of the Nyquist diagrams as much as knowing how to use them to interpret what is going on with the system.
So notice in the bottom left, this is what our Nyquist contour will look like if we don't have any poles or zeros on the J omega axis. The one in the middle is what it will look like if we have a polar zero at the origin. And the one on the right is what that contour would look like if we have poles or zeros on the J omega axis. To create the Nyquist plot, you should find the value at omega equals zero, find a value at omega equals infinity, find the imaginary axis intercept, find the real axis intercept, and then count the number of clockwise encirclements in order to determine stability. Example three, if g of s is equal to one over s squared plus three s plus two, create the Nyquist contour and Nyquist diagram in order to check for stability. We have two left half plane poles at negative one and negative two. And we are going to make our Nyquist contour so that it takes up the j omega axis and the entire right half plane. So there will be a radius of infinity. And you can create the Nyquist diagram by plugging in values to find the intercepts on the real axis, on the imaginary axis, and at omega equals zero and omega equal infinity. And when you find those values, you will see that the shape for the Nyquist diagram looks like the following, where omega equals zero at one half and omega equals infinity at zero, and the imaginary axis intercepts are 0 0.236 and negative 0 0.236. And what you should see here is that we do not have any encirclements of negative one, so n is equal to zero, and we know that p is equal to zero because we don't have any right half plane poles, so z is equal to n plus p, which equals zero, so this is a stable system. In class activity one, for the contour control system with an open loop transfer function, g of s is equal to 5k over s plus one cubed, we know that we have three poles at negative one, and our Nyquist contour once again takes up the entire right half plane, and I have now generated my Nyquist diagram using MATLAB, and the code is below the figure here, and omega is equal to zero, at five, which is our DC gain, and omega is equal to infinity at zero, and our imaginary axis intercepts, one of them is at the square root of three over three, and the other one is at negative the square root of three over three, And then our real axis intercepts, we have the one that was at the zero and the other one is at the square root of three. So since we do not have an encirclement of negative one, we would have n is equal to zero and we do not have any right half plane poles. So p is equal to zero. So z is equal to n plus p, which equals zero. So therefore we have a stable system. In class activity two, for the control system with an open loop transfer function, g of s is equal to four k over s times s plus one times s plus two, create the Nyquist diagram and determine the stability and use the Nyquist diagram to determine the DC gain. So we have left half plane poles at zero, negative one, and negative two, and we will put those on our diagram. Notice here that the Nyquist contour has our poles of zero, negative one, and negative two on it, but because we have one at the origin, we have this modified contour that does not have that middle piece. So here we have generated the Nyquist diagram in MATLAB. And we have at omega equals zero that it goes to infinity and negative infinity.
and our DC gain does not exist, but at omega equals infinity, we are at zero. And our other real axis intersect, intercept is at omega equals the square root of two. So we also do not have any encirclements of negative one and we don't have any right half plane poles. So Z is equal to N plus P, which is zero. So we have a stable system. In class activity three, for the following open loop transfer functions and Nyquist plots, find the number of right half plane poles, encirclements of negative one, and number of right half plane zeros by using z equals n plus p. For the first one, ga of s is equal to s plus one over s squared plus s plus one. So the number of right hand poles is zero. The number of encirclements of negative one is zero. So z is equal to n plus p, which equals zero. And therefore, we have a stable system. GB of S is equal to S squared plus S plus one over S squared minus four. So P is equal to one. N is equal to zero because we don't have any encirclements of negative one. So Z is equal to one. So this is an unstable system. GC of S is equal to 4S plus 1 over S squared minus 3S plus 3. So P is equal to 2. N is equal to negative 2 because we have two counterclockwise encirclements. So Z is equal to P plus N, which equals 0. GD of S is equal to two over S squared plus two S minus three. So P is equal to one. N is equal to negative one for one counterclockwise encirclement of negative one. So Z is equal to P plus N, which equals zero. So here we have a stable system. GC of S is equal to negative four S plus two over S squared plus three S plus one. So P is equal to zero. N is equal to two because we have two clockwise encirclements of negative one. So Z is equal to N plus P, which is two. So this is an unstable system. GF of S is equal to S squared plus 2S minus 2 over 2S cubed plus S squared plus 3. So P is equal to 2. And N is equal to negative 2 for two counterclockwise encirclements in negative 1. So Z is equal to 0. So we have a stable system. GG of S is equal to 2S plus 1 over S squared minus 3S plus S plus 5. So P is equal to 2 and N is equal to 0. So Z is equal to 2, so this is also an unstable system. And finally, GH of S is equal to 4S plus 1 over S squared minus 3S plus 3. So P is equal to 2. N is equal to negative 2 for two counterclockwise encirclements of negative 1. And Z is equal to P plus N, which equals 0. So we have a stable system.